Hello and welcome to episode 160 of the Perth to Paisley podcast, a podcast dedicated to Heart of Midlothian Football Club, who are heading for European football once again. The Jambos bounced back from two goals down against Livingston at Pinecastle to ensure that a passport hunt can commence. And joining me, Adam Kennedy, to discuss Livy's capital collapse is Daniel McIver. How are we, McIver? All right, doing well. Still try to catch my breath after that first half. Because fucking hell, that was insane. Uh, more importantly, how are you? How have you been? You've obviously been away for a few oh, weeks. Jesus. You're back yeah, now. Don't, don't remind me. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we got through it, gang. Uh, but still, still one more module to go. So, yeah. Oh, I just so, I'm so exhausted. This 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 year and this like season, I swear uh, it's been the longest in human history. It's felt long, like. Crazy. It felt really long. I saw. Just, I said, who was that? Um, to the end. Who was that guy? Celtic had on loan at the start of the season for Preston or Liverpool or something like that. Who was that centre half? Oh, uh, oh my God, Nat Phillips. Aye, I saw somebody share a compilation of him the day, and my Celtic pal met, went, uh, said to me, he was like, "Fucking hell, this season feels so long. I forgot he was here this year. <laughs> it feels like he was here two seasons ago." Now that you mention it, yeah, Jesus, that took a while to even click there. I couldn't remember his name the whole time, so thank you for remembering who he is. <laughs> he used to be I thought I was going to be doing the quiz this week. <laughs> no, 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 no. Got all these other questions stored up that I'm just going to be chucking at you during the show. Jesus, that that, uh, that caught me by surprise. Yep. And it's fair to say that there were a couple of surprises. Well, hey, he's no hey. Mr. Step. He's still here. <laughs> In the Scottish Premiership this weekend, we're going to go around the grounds and we're going to chat about just a wonderful quintet of fixtures. I, I was tempted to start at Pataudry, but I'm, I have to start at Fir Park. As to. a late leveller, saw Motherwell deny Hibernian the chance to finish in the top six, as the Steelmen are also consigned to a bottom half finish. 94 minutes of the clock. You just, you love to see it. You really do. Um... And proceedings at Pataudry meant that Dundee secured a top finish or a top six finish as a newly promoted team joining the likes of Hearts, Rangers, Ross County and Livingston in successfully completing that feat as they were held to a goalless draw at Pataudry against Aberdeen. Uh, elsewhere, Celtic beats at Mirren 3-0. Nobody cares about that. Celtic applying pressure on Rangers, moving a step closer to retaining the Scottish Premiership title. Uh, and it was imperative that Hearts were victorious this weekend uh, as Kilmarnock picked up just a third league win on the road uh, this season as they won 2-0 in Perth at Medemar Park against St Johnston on the Saturday. However, the Sunday was quite the encounter. Um, a first ever success for the mighty Staggies against Rangers. Ross County beating Rangers by three goals to two. And the Highlanders have put a dent in the Jairs title hopes this season. I'm hoping that they take their anger out on Dundee in midweek as opposed to at the National Stadium against us on Sunday, MacIver. But what did you make of that quintet? Could not have gone any better, really. Not really. Uh, start with the Rangers game because it's just the most mental result. Like, listen, I've been, you, I think we've both been saying that we've been impressed with Don Cowie and the way that he's got Ross County into a wee bounce. But... Just give him the job. Yeah, I know. Just do it. I think Just he should decline it, but I think they should <laughs> offer him it. I think he should, like, Don Carey, I think he might be thinking, I'm going to do what Naismith did. I'm going to have my first debut season and it just be a really big success. But I think he would be smart to look at other people and be like, hmm, maybe it's, maybe I go to like a championship. Yeah, exactly. I, I'll be honest, I'd forgotten what his name was. So I didn't know what he just say, the Aberdeen manager. But also, Sticking with Aberdeen, Jim Goodwin went and it didn't really work and yeah, stuff point. like that. Go to maybe a lower league side, do well with him, and then jump forward. But if he wants to just go, I I can take Ross County. He's not got a bad result on his CV just going, eh, yeah, yeah, I've just beaten Rangers not. for the first time in their history. I think that's the, the tricky thing, kind of striking while the iron's hot. I think he might look in the Scottish Championship and think, Callum Davidson led... St. Johnston to a cup double. Yeah. Now he's managing Queen's Park. No disrespect to Queen's Park. No, of course, but, but it's... You'd have thought with that achievement, he'd yeah. get something better off the back of that. So, yeah, it's tricky. I, I don't envy Don Kerry to, to make that decision either no. way, but, I mean, that is just phenomenal. 
It's mad. And I, I only saw bits and pieces of it because I was busy on Sunday. But by all accounts, they really deserved the oh, three did. points as well. Yeah, Just mad. And it is... I did see Hart's Twitter kind of being like, is this bad for us? <laughs> like, However, I'm going to... Look, I'm going to put a positive spin on it. They're going to beat Dundee tomorrow as this goes out. And then they'll go, right, we need to just focus on the league. Fuck the cup. It does. If we get through, we get through. But we need to focus on the league. There's only a point there. That's my blind optimism. <laughs> <laughs> when in reality, yeah. they'll beat Dundee and go, right, we need to fucking bat our hearts, get the cup and get a league. Never mind the possibility of a domestic travel from it. No, just that. That just, just the that. league and the league cup that will do this exactly. Um, then yeah, come on, Nick. I I was listening. We were actually mentioning them before we went on because Kelly just announced their season ticket prices, and you can tell they're in top four now and wanting more money to buy players. Um, but I saw I can't remember who it was. I think it was actually on the Terrace podcast this week, Craig Anderson, where he made the point. He was like. It's a bit annoying how Kelly have been getting into this run and just get a big result, and yet we've just not lost any ground. <laughs> like we've just stayed clear. But it's good for them to kind of cement fourth place. I'm worried about St Johnston. I don't want Levine and McGowan to get relegated. Uh, yeah, uh, look. But I don't want uh, Don Curry and Jan Dandy to get relegated. That, that's what that's what I was going to say. I, to me, Craig Levine would go. Further up in my estimations, if he took St Johnson down, I was a bit, that is a good point. That is a good way of looking at it. I wouldn't mind you know, that. Gowser would forever be a Hearts legend. Yeah. Like, he is anyway. But yeah. we, like, there's absolutely no. I was about to say it'd be harsh to say, <laughs> right, Gowser, this is how you cement your place. <laughs> you St Johnson up, you're stripped of your legend status. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen with them. Aberdeen, obviously news today that they've appointed an actual competent football manager which is yes. annoying from I'm annoyed sweden? at that is from sweden? sweden yeah peter peter thulin no what's his I thought name? It was jimmy, jimmy thulin Thule. yeah jimmy. peter yes, leaving yeah. is the current yes, caretaker yes. there is. i was like where's he getting that from the season, but man. it makes sense <laughs> um i yeah that's annoying that's just quite a yeah, competent yeah. interesting appointment but they I cannot the box, to be fair. yeah i know it is and like like I do know there'll be some Aberdeen fans going, we did this with Stephen Glass. We made a slightly out of the box, and, but it's different to Stephen Glass. Jimmy Thielen is coming in with like I actual pedigree. I hope it is. I hope it's a disaster. But Dundee, it's just mad that like they're just competent. It's so weird. I know they don't have a working football pitch, but they're competent on other matters. Mate, 100%. This is what, I'm glad you brought this up. They have 100% sacrificed their pitch to yeah, finish top six. Yeah, and you know what? Are. I'm all for it. Uh, <laughs> there, I said it. I'm going to praise Dundee Football Club. <laughs> I am all for that. Get yeah. it right up, everybody else. Look yeah. after yourself. Self-interest ultimately came to the fore, as I've written about, as you know, we've seen in the past few exactly. years. I'm a big fan of it. And it, yeah. you know what? it just gets folk really angry when talking about the pitch. <laughs> Yes, it is a disgrace. Yes, it's an absolute shambles. It's it's embarrassing for Scottish football. But if I was a Dundee fan, I would not care a single jot. Also, it's not it's not six. affected us. So fuck it. I don't give a shit. It's funny. Exactly. Yeah, we just we we, we look on with interest and and laughter. Uh, Celtic, as you say, who gives a shit? They comfortably won. Uh, however, they in the driving seat now. Yeah, I do think so. I think they'll just have the attitude now of. We just need to win every game and we'll win the league. Yeah, and they can I'm, do that. I wouldn't be surprised if they won their final five, particularly yeah. with hosting Rangers. At that's Head. the big thing because it's a Parkhead. I'm like, yeah. that's going to be when it. Rangers last won at Parkhead, off the top of my head. No, nah, you can to be honest. But yeah, so, I, I can only see it going that way. And then it's like, if you said to a Hibs fan, how could you Hibs it really badly? They would go, oh, you know, like, we're like 20 seconds left and a guy who's a centre half scores a world day kind of thing. That would be a bit of a, that would be the cherry on top of the shit cake of this season. And it's exactly what happened. I'd put my phone away at the game. I was at our game and saw it was the 93rd minute and I was like, oh, fuck's sake. And then you hear the Gorgi Ultra start singing and it's like, no way have they actually done this. And then you see the goal and it's, listen, Jacob Blaney, he can clearly score free kicks. 
be fucking 35 yards out as he did against Motherwell, wasn't it? When he was a thingy uh, in Europe. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's yeah. Right. yeah. But to do that is okay. just hilarious. Nick Montgomery speaking about they were 20 seconds away from jubilation. <laughs> <laughs> he got out, right, okay, mate. Well, I see today their moment of the season was climbing a draw at Tyne Castle with Ellie Yuan's. No goals. way. Like the actual... you, have you not seen the photo where it's like the memorable moment of the season? It's like oh, some guy, God, I think it's amazing. a shareholder's dinner or something, and he's just stood there with a the plaque and Ellie Yuan's just next to him, and it literally just says memorable moment of the season, L U N for scoring two goals against Hearts. It's like, Jesus. Fucking that just sums hell. up the season that you've had. And I, it, uh, it's also I, funny though that it didn't affect Motherwell in any way. Like it's not oh, like it yeah, benefited yeah, Motherwell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just did it for the power. Yeah. yeah. If we are finishing bottom six and so are you. Yeah, exactly. Um I I thought it was going to be Blair Spittle to be honest. We've so already seen Jan Danda yeah. obviously scored against hey, him. Though, so I thought he said that would have been Rocky amazing. Flying, so oh. it's fine. Uh, like or even like a Blair Spittle corners headed away by Rocky Bashiri, only as far as Andy Halliday who just rockets one into the top or corner. Sam Nicholson it... runs past three and does them because <laughs> it was this well obviously this time two years ago that Andy yeah. Halliday the Halliday Derby and then yeah. Gibbs Hasta La Vista were in this top. Um, so two yeah. out of three seasons, Hibs finishing the bottom six is fucking and mental. And Aberdeen, oh god, yeah, I didn't even think of that. Fucking hell, because I wow. saw it, it's something like us getting three consecutive top four finishes. It's like we've only done it like three times or something. Yeah. Or like it's it's fucking ridiculous. I'm fucking calling it now. That's a quiz question. It's and not. I, I, it's oh not, fucking thank, thank God! Thank God it's not. No, exactly. because I can't remember the number. I couldn't remember <laughs> if it's like three or four times or something I like that. Yeah. Is it not since the nineties? The first time since the nineties. Something like that. Two, yeah. three or something like that. I don't know. I can't. I, I, mind. Thank, thank God it's not a quiz question because I thought you'd be onto that. Fuck. <laughs> but that's to come. After we discuss, frankly, a batshit crazy <laughs> first 45 minutes of action at fo uh, football at Tide Castle. I want to say that we'll talk about the entire 90, but... No, we won't. Uh, That's a lie. There's no point. There's absolutely no point. Because, um, let's be honest, it was just a, a crazy first half. And thankfully, you can give your opinion on it. However, Stephen Naismith made a grand total... What are you so buzzing about? Because I've just remembered who came into the squad, and I'm so happy. <laughs> Made a grand total of six changes, despite a victory in Paisley the weekend before last. Craig Gordon, Nathaniel Atkinson, Benny Beningamy, Yutaro Oda, the fit again Barry Mackay, and Lauren Shankland all returned to the starting eleven. Outdrop Xander Clark, Dexter Lembakisa, Stephen Kingsley, Macaulay Tate, Alan Forrest and Kenneth Vargas, which meant that Hearts lined up as follows. It was a 4-2-3-1 with Xander Clark in goal. Back four, Nathaniel Atkinson, Frankie Kent, Kyros and Alex Cochran. Cammy Devlin and Benny Beringamate in front of the back four, with Utaro Oda on the right, Barry Mackay on the left, and George Grant supporting Lawrence Shankland. What did you make of six changes, Mackay? I'll be totally honest. I don't think I looked at the outfield until I like until they were walking out the tunnel. I just saw on the bus in. Craig Gordon was starting and was like, I'm happy. I'm see happy. on the graphic as well. CG. Yeah, I think yeah, I literally yeah, just yeah. saw the graphic and was like, don't need to see the right. We could be playing the under 13s. <laughs> Couldn't give a shit. Craig Gordon's back. That's all I care about. And I mean, Naismith gave the ex exact justification that he should have done, where that he's going to be playing at Hamden and he shouldn't be chucked in completely out the cold. I would argue that means you then give them a couple of games. You don't just give them one game before going to fucking play Rangers at Hamden. But fine, easy. at least you gave them that extra game. Um, on the actual outfield, I I was really surprised to see Forrest dropped yeah. because he's just been good this season and was like, oh, okay. And then after the first 20 minutes, just I was like, Forrest, well, this is Forrest and Vargas. Well, Vargas, we've at least seen him come off the bench a few times this season and like he's not been like a guaranteed start and stuff whereas for last game at Tynecastle though and scored scored at both that's true, against Levy earlier on in the season so after I'm just, 20 I'm just minutes out there. I'm not, I'm, after 20 minutes I was going why the fuck did Forrest and Vargas not start <laughs> <laughs> I was fully back um the Atkinson Lembakisa situation is very much much of a muchness I think they're both as 
buying average as each other, really. I'm so... terrified ahead of, the, ahead of the weekend. That is that is the one problem area, I think, for me. Yeah, I think that is where the That's result will live or die, to be honest, at Hamden. But <laughs> generally, I was... Th- Listen, it may be his arrogance, but I was thinking we should be able to play anybody here and win comfortably. I actually predicted 4-0. So I, I called that we'd nice. score four. I did not call the amount we'd concede and in the funny fashions that we would concede them as well well it's funny you say that because uh, I predicted that Hearts would win by two goals however Ah. (laughs) it was by a 2-0 scoreline (laughs) as I thought a clean sheet was also very viable (laughs) Um, but maybe maybe we'd be frustrated by you know a robust Livingston an organised Livingston a tough to break down Livingston and then Livingston just put that to one side and decided to have a go at us. Um, Stephen Kelly, it was his birthday, and he was like, I'm just fucking gone for it. As as was reflected by by the start, um, eight minutes and the first opportunity of the match came Livingston's way. Michael Nottingham's throw in at the weak field side lands at Jamie Brandon's feet. Our former fullback finds Ayo Obelai, who spreads out to the left-hand side as Hibbs Loney, Daniel Mackay, gives it to Sean Kelly at left-back. Frankie Kent appears to nod back towards goal from that long pass forward, but Teddy Yenge sneaks in, looks to latch onto the defender's header, but Craig Gordon thankfully gathers the Aussies' tame effort. However, less than two minutes later, and with less than ten minutes on the clock... I laughed at this, by the way. I just actually sat and laughed. ...break the deadlock. Frankie Kent looks to find Lauren Shankled on halfway. I'm not really sure if it's a poor pass, or if it's poor play from our star striker. Livy work it back to Shamal George. The Livingston goalkeeper just sends a long ball up the park, bounces over Frankie Kent, and Craig Gordon decides to take matters into his own feet as opposed to hands, looks to control the punt up the pitch from his opposing number. Stephen Kelly, who scored at Tynecastle for Livingston last season, lobs Craig Gordon with a keeper in no man's land and Livingston take a shock lead at Tynecastle. You, and countless others, as you alluded, were clamouring for Craig Gordon to come back between the sticks. I said it would be harsh to drop Sander Clark. <laughs> you said that you were just laughing. I mean, that, like, what were you thinking once we found ourselves behind at the weekend? I was thinking that beautiful, handsome man has just decided to stretch his leg and it's gone a bit wrong. Who gives a fuck? As a proper heart man, I would never criticise Craig Gordon. And anyone who does, I would suggest have their season ticket ripped up and thrown away because it's a disgrace if you do. He's he's a perfect human being, right? I don't give a shit that he did this. I just Now, the question you've asked there, I have an answer more for the second half, second goal. And again, oh it, may God, be his, it may be his arrogance or it's, fuck me, how bad are Livy that it, at no point in that game did I think we were losing. I was just like, yeah, we're still going to comfortably win this. Now, I know that sounds like I'm sat here with the benefit of hindsight going, oh, yeah, I was oh, totally I was going to say, that was not me at 2-0 down. I don't know what it was. Uh, maybe it was just so chuffed that Craig Gordon was back. I was like, there's nothing <laughs> bad's going to happen today. We're going to comfortably win. I think what he's trying to do, I don't know if maybe there's a part of him going, shit, this is how I got hurt last time. So he kind of doesn't commit as much. Or he's trying to just take a touch and go, I can just be cute here and just fuck it up kind of thing. But I think it's the latter. I think he's hoping that Nathaniel Atkinson will be the first to receive and he's just kind of ushering it out to the side. I'm fine with blaming Atkinson for this instead of Gordon. Yep, if that's <laughs> no, what you're no, suggesting, no, no, I'm absolutely fine with that. It, don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> I, um, you, you hear it all the time that if you pull out a 50-50, that's, that's where you do get hurt. Yeah, true. So, Very it, true. It, it, if, if what you're saying is true and that Craig Gordon then shirks that, I, I just I just think he's trying to look cool and play it out and it just Which I goes fully disastrously support. wrong. I'm so on board with that, Craig. Do that. Get it out of your system ahead of this weekend. Well, exactly. I, I'd much rather it be against Livingston than against yep. Rangers. Exactly. My goodness. But yes, I, I did see the scores coming through and I was thinking, you've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> However, it would get worse. <laughs> On 90 minutes, a bizarre situation arises that I think perhaps perfectly encapsulates our 
slow and sluggish start. Again, it's a Shamal George hoof up the pitch that causes problems. Kyle Rose flicks the ball backwards. Alex Cochran is under the attention of Scott Pittman. He goes to the ground as it appears as though he fouls him. Nobody plays to the whistle. Livingston continue. Pittman himself is surprised that he's been given the go-ahead. Pulls back from Akai, flicks it to Stephen Kelly on the left-hand side. And it's a great stop to deny Kelly from Gordon before eventually the officials just... I don't know. Just right. I, I was going to say pull it back, but it, they don't even. It, this McIver is a perfect me, time for to mention these fucking officials, right? I, Who was it, it again? Appear, uh, Colin Stephen. It would appear right. that the alarm had gone off several times, but Hearts were just insistent on pressing that snooze button in retaliation. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The weirdest referee in performance I've seen this season. <laughs> Not the worst, the weirdest. Now, I will. We did find out at halftime, well, at least I did, there was a thing where after every single goal, the ref changed the ball, and it was starting to really I mean, annoy me. about that. It, it was, was it, weird. It, it, I was so rattled. I was so <laughs> fucking rattled by it. Because the first couple of times it happened, you're like, has the ball burst as he's hit it? And then you're like, well, look at the goals that Stephen Kelly scored. They're no rockets. Like, fucking hell, how shite are these boards? And then it starts happening when we're scoring tappings. And it's like, right, what's happening? Now then, it does get explained to me at half time that it's a auctioning thing for people that Livingston are involved in and the SPFL are involved in. So therefore, fine. You can do that, lads. I would have just liked to have been told, but it's fine. Yeah, However, it's, it's not like the S- SFA and SPFL to leave fans in the lurch. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> However, not like them at all. The fucking refereeing performance, that mo- that type of moment happened so many times where an obvious foul happened. And I'm talking about this for both sides. I don't just mean for hearts. I mean, there was times where Cammy Devlin flew into somebody and clearly it was a foul. The ref would let it play on for maybe five seconds and then pull it back. And it's not a situation where there was, like, advantage. Like, this one at least, there's a, even though it's a fucking clear foul, because he clearly just gives it, even though there's a shot, like, how can... That's not the rules. You know like, it's bad when Scott Pittman's even amazed that he's been allowed to kind of exactly. play on, isn't it? So but I'm bad. talking about moments where Cammy Devlin goes through somebody, we then get the ball, but it goes out for a throw-in, but then he pulls it back for a free kick, and it's like... Well, there was no advantage. We got the ball. Like that's that's a turnover. What he do- it was infuriating. But as I say, it wasn't like you were sat. At how many times have we seen referees this season where you're like they they don't know what they're doing? This is terrible. He's getting everything wrong. He would eventually get to the right decision, but just like as if he was watching it through a live stream, so was five seconds behind everybody else. The referee on delay. Yeah, it, it was so it, weird. I wonder if that's just the boy in the VAR. And, like, you know how referees Maybe are there so was latency on VAR. They've just, they've just had a little, a little lag in the VAR room. Yeah. Colin Stevens not even watching the game. He's just wandering around with the earpiece. I've just realised that was the first time I can remember in ages where, like, there wasn't a big VAR check. There was one where it actually came up on the screen that they were checking for a red card against, I think it was Obelai on Shankland for violent conduct. But it was very so quickly... It was very, it was like, it flashed up, possible red card, and as Graham Eason is saying, VR is checking, it comes up on the screen, no red it's card complete. kind oh, of thing. Nice. Like It was fine. But yeah, that, that is a good point. I, I hadn't even thought of that. There was like no VR usage, despite there being hundreds of goals. All of them were clearly goals. So it was weird. You mentioned goals there. Yeah, um, It would soon go from bad to worse as Livingston would double their advantage. Teddy Yenge, was causing Frankie Kent all sorts of problems after Nathaniel Atkinson's throw and looks to be miscontrolled by Frankie Kent. The ball breaks for Stephen Kelly on the edge of the area and as you alluded to, the now 24-year-old marked his birthday with a brace as Hearts went two down to the Lions. You know that I love when Hearts come flying at the traps and start quickly and simultaneously you know that nothing annoys me more than when we take an absolute age to get going. Um... Like I say, I saw the scoreline come through and I thought, oh my God, you're not preparing for a semi-final <laughs> losing to fucking already relegated Livingston at Tynecastle. 
I had the next week. I was thinking about giving my ticket away. I was like, there is absolutely no danger I'm going to that. You can stick that right up your jumper. I don't want to be getting on a bus after 20-odd 20, 20 minutes just sat outside the National Stadium waiting for everybody else to come back on, having collected a carryout. No thank you. I think it was easily the worst 20 minutes of the season in terms of performance. It was so fucking bad. We hadn't done anything either. No, we had literally done nothing. Um, You won't have seen it as the highlight doesn't show it, but this all comes from the fact that Atkinson did his stupid little cut-in thing in the middle, loses it, and then that goes out for our throw-in as a result. I did see it. I yeah, did see it because I, I think like... was it sports scene showed an alternative angle. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah, they yeah. did. Sorry, aye. Right. And just what <laughs> what what possesses you to do that? Like, I don't what... know. <sighs> but the main culprit here is what happened to Frankie Kent on Saturday. Because I'll be honest, I was thinking this is the worst game I've seen of his in a maroon shirt. Yeah, so easily it was easily his worst game, um, and thankfully. He was only that bad, like everybody, for twenty minutes. But it was a fucking terrible twenty he's minutes. Been such a solid, consistent performer for us week in, week out. Arguably one of the signings of the season in yeah. Scotland. And yet, I just thought, no, like not this can't be the same guy. Going into the game because of Yangi's height, I was like, shit. Rolls is going to be really caught unawares by it. They're going to be really is he, on is him. He looks six four, six five. I think he's six five. Yeah, he, he's a big guy. Big and I was boy. like, I was like, fucking roll struggles with Curtis May. I was like, he's going to be fucked with Yangi. But then <laughs> in that whole afternoon, I thought Rolls dealt with Yangi really well, and Ken couldn't get fucking near him. And again, like switch bodies. It was crazy. Again, it was thankfully only for 20 minutes, but it was so uncharacteristic. And again, I'm just going to say, well done, Frankie, for getting it out of your system ahead yeah. of the nice. game this weekend. Because like nobody will fucking remember that 20 minutes if we get well, through on Sunday. If he pops up with the winner from a corner, he will He, will he can be, have he those 20 forgiven. minutes for the rest of yeah. the season. I think of a yeah, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Each and every game, yeah. only got five left. There you go. <laughs> Doesn't it matter? Just keep it for the cups. However, right. thankfully, it wouldn't be long before the Jambos would half the deficit. Both centre backs exchanging passes before Barry Mackay receives from Kai Rolls on the left hand side. Mackay looking to drive past Michael Nottingham, assesses the situation, takes his time, pokes inside with a forward pass. Hallelujah. Towards Lauren Shankland, who advances, cuts the ball across goal, and George Grant slides home to bag his second goal in as many weeks. Game on. Barry Mackay and a forward pass. What a wonderful combination. How I have missed you. So it's weird. I'm actually going to take this time to not speak about Barry Mackay because I felt that Grant was one of two players in the opening 20 minutes who were good. Grant and Oda were the two that I was like, you guys are switched on. You guys are running. You guys are looking for stuff. And if you can let the other nine is... know that we're involved yeah, in a football exactly. match, that'd be sweet. Yeah. I thought Grant was man of the match on the day. I think there was a few people overall that could have been Shanklin, Devlin, Rogues, and Grant for me were kind of the four. But Grant, I don't know, I don't know if he started listening and just heard you badmouthing him. I, no, it's because his deal's coming up. Right? It is, but maybe let's it just is. pretend it's because you've been <laughs> bad mouthing them. Or could it be that Hearts' transfer activity, he's looked at it, gone, Jan Danda plays as a 10, Blair Spittle plays as a 10. Shit, my future could be <laughs> in doubt here. Yeah. Um, I, I need to, you know, find it from somewhere and get the finger out. Whatever and the reason is, it, I didn't give a shit, it's worked. No. Well, exactly. Now, now he's clinging on to a place and going. Well, hold on a second. I, I can contribute here. Yeah, he'll be I mean, gutted it, if he doesn't start at the weekend. And I, I don't. I, my brain I don't is like, start. my brain's like, you know I that. don't want to say that George Grant should start in a semi final. But he I probably. Cer- I certainly don't. Shoot. Given given that some of the nasty remarks that I've come out with. Yeah, imagine he just finds you in your section, <laughs> knee slides, shushies, shushies, <laughs> cops his ear, yeah, running down the touchline, get out of here, you. But yeah, really tough for him. The pass from Mackay is great. 
the pass from Makai is excellent. Shanklin does really, really well to cut it back. And And in fairness to George Grant, right place, right time. Yeah, totally. Again, this could just be the fact that he's been misplaced this entire time in terms of not running from deep, kind of staying central and a wee bit too deep. He's looked far better, more advanced than anywhere else. So. I don't. I don't think it's a surprise that we're beginning beginning to see the real George Grant. It's nice for him to turn up. Um, been waiting on it for a while. Two and a half year after he joined. <laughs> um, I will say, it's funny that this is the first of three identical goals. I've never oh seen God. that in a game. <laughs> Let's talk about the second. A few minutes later, thankfully the men in maroon were level. <laughs> Mike Livingston's two goals. It was launched forward by the goalkeeper Craig G. Clears. I will obelize Skull. Lauren Shanklin latches onto it. And again, centers from the left hand side, as you've alluded to. This time for Yutaro Oda to knock home from close range. It's Desmond, 2 2, hearts back on level terms. And the two bright sparks that you believe were in that first 20 minutes are the ones that have etched their names on the score sheet. Definitely. Shanklin takes a horrible first touch. He wants to shoot. Them far too wide. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he is like, right, I'm in here. I'm rattling this far corner. And then his touch is minging. So he's like, don't worry, everybody. This was all part of the plan. I'll just I'm do down. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look, we scored that way 45 seconds ago. And again, as you say, Oda takes a chance and is like, right, I'll just get into that position. Gambling, that's what we're all about. I know, and I felt like Oda, that kind of encapsulated his first half performance is just gambling on things and trying to get something, and both times he did, we ended up scoring from them. And as I say, even when it went 2-0, I was just like, they're shit. We're going to score goals here. They're not, like, it's what everybody said all season. The one characteristic of Levy teams in the past few years has been really tough to break down solid defences. When, in actual fact, they're almost the opposite this season, where they actually look all right going forward, but just they cannot keep a clean sheet to save their life. It's funny you say that, because it, like you still can't remember Livingston really... like They do look a threat, but mm. see if they just had some day like, they could hang their hat up. Yeah, on. true. Do you know, like, it, I like Big Yenge. I do. Yeah. I, think, I think he's looked a real handful. I think he's, he's got all the attributes, really. He's, he's what most people think Joel Nubley is. I mean, Joel Nubley's not yeah. scored a league goal this season. Yeah, Which is crazy. mental. Bruce Anderson, I quite like as well, but again, wee bit raw. Yeah. And you just look, if, if David Martindale must be wishing that he could just combine the three of them. Yeah, exactly. I've got like the fucking perfect center forward. Oh, yeah. But, but it's just... Because I swear, I've, I've just checked it just now. Yenge this season's played 12 and got five goal contributions. That's no terrible not, for a bottom a side exactly. who, have, who have won three games all season. That's mental. Funny that one of them came Easter Road. I know, it's great, isn't it? It's fucking great. Then, 39 minutes. The comeback is soon to be complete. Jamie Brandon dispossessed by Benny Beningame after Sean Kelly looks to find our former youngster. Frankie Kent receives from a Congolese king. The centre-back centres for Cammy Devlin, who is in acres of space. He slips it to Alex Cochran, who links up with Barry Mackay. Lauren Shanklin flicks on. Alex Cochran advances, marauding, as he so often does. And he centres for Cammy Devlin, who nutmegs Shamal George from no more than about six yards out. Fantastic finish. The comeback's complete. Our blushes are spared. Three goals in just over ten minutes is remarkable. 3-2. Hallelujah. McIver, you've alluded to Livy's rank rotten defending. Three low crosses from the left hand side. <laughs> We're looking at a side that occupied twelfth position, our championship bound, and it's absolutely no surprise when they defend as poorly as that, is it? It's just crazy. They keep they seem to keep regen and Devlins. Uh, like because I was like, what do you mean they've got Devlin at right back? They sold him. And it's like, no, no, it's another one. They've got another Mikey, Devlin, yeah. Who's uh, who's only there because he's injury ravaged. Like I I they signed for Hibs as well, Mikey Devlin, didn't he? He's, yeah, he he's, did. he's been at Aberdeen Hibs, just never been able to get a run of games together. Because I think he's the Livingston captain, but even then yeah. he's in and out of the team just down to the injury, which which is a shame, but at the back they're they're awful. Like Surely after the second one, you go, all right, 
maybe let's not allow them to just do this every single time. Like, it was crazy just sat there going, this is just Groundhog Day. Are we just going to do this for 90 minutes and we'll win 83-2? Like, what is the plan? I mean, Alex Cochran fancies it rather than Lauren Shanklin down the left hand side this time. They could have done a round robin. Just anybody, yeah. anybody wants to be assist, just down just you come to this there. left flank. And Barry, just, you're back in the team. It was just crazy. I will say, this is my goal of the season. Oh, really? It's not my favourite goal. My favourite goal is Shanklin to Easter Road. But I think Terrible. this beats Shanklin against St Mirren at home. One is an Airdrie. Airdrie was a nice. Oh yeah, Airdrie was class. Yeah, in fairness, but it's like the the one that I've seen a lot of people say is the Shanklin St Mirror one for the edge of the box. It's like that's an individual piece of brilliance that sums him up as a player. Was that December? Yeah, Yeah, that's right. Because I I was at that game just just before Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I like this one because it, it like Devlin basically starts the move and then finishes it, like. It's amazing the one touch football coming in, Shanklin around the corner, Mackay flicking it on, Cochran just running it's on tiny. it. And it's it, it finishes with a nutmeg, like and it's Kami oh, Devlin. I was gonna say assisted by Alex Cochran. It's literally like your favorite my, two players. Exactly. That's why outfield players, I should say. Yeah. That's why it's my favorite goal, because it's my two guys in my header on Twitter. They've combined. <laughs> Which is not a sentence you often hear, <laughs> so I'm taking it. But thankfully, as I say, the comeback was complete. However, on the verge of half time, Hearts would be handed the chance to enter a crazy half, two to the good. Alex Cochran's throwing is controlled by Lord Shankland, fed back to Frankie Kent. The centre back launches it forward. <laughs> We mentioned him there. Mikey Devlin looking to head back to Shamal George. Yutaro Oda's onto the header in a flash. Looks around the goalkeeper. Is taken down. And thankfully, Colin Stephen rightfully points to the spot. Lauren Shanklin converts. Sends Shamal George the wrong way. And thunders home our second penalty in as many weeks. 4-2. Wow. It's probably like one of the best halves I've ever seen at Tynecastle in terms of like entertainment. Like, I can't imagine it. Oh, my, um, we have like a family friend who took his partner to his, to her first game. <laughs> that was her first half. Oh my Ever. God. And it was like, it must have just been like, it's not always like this. It's uh, often. As was reflected ones. by the second 45. Yeah. This is what we're usually yeah. accustomed to seeing. See, I'm glad you've got this because this is what you'll get nine times out of 10. Oh, um, good on good on hearts for literally showcasing how simultaneously fantastic and appalling it can be in 90 minutes. Personification of yeah. this football club in 90 minutes. Um I'm, this is what I was alluding to earlier when I was saying Yutaro Oda just taking a chance and going, I'm fast enough to get in there before yeah. that gets back to him. Really tough for him. I'm surprised George didn't get booked. I know double jeopardy yeah. means he doesn't get sent off, but I thought he'd get booked for it. Yeah, considering he, he wipes him. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I say, I, I think looking from a Hearts perspective, really pleased that Yutaro Oda is probably well aware that he's lost his place in the team, really. And I mean, with Hamden just around the corner, that this is the game to, to impress in and ultimately give Naismith a, a selection headache. Yeah, I, definitely. Uh, yeah, I, I've got no qualms, really. If it's he or Vargas, I'd be I'd be happy with, with either, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, I was really surprised that Shankland took it just because Grant was on the pitch and it's kind of been established that Grant is the penalty taker regardless. I like um, it. There's a, there's a golden boot to win. I mean, James oh, Tavernier totally. gets yet another at the weekend. That's not yeah. great. Which um, was, by the way, but you know what some of them are like. And really, tra- it's actually also re- a really good penalty. Great pen. It's not even just like, oh, he's just going to hit it load in the middle. It's like, it's in his side netting. It's great. Yeah, it's, it, it's not one that you think, like you wouldn't assume that Shankler had missed a couple this season. Oh yeah, totally. That, yeah, if you see what I mean, like that was that was with sheer conviction, with confidence, knew exactly what he was doing. The fact that he sends the keeper the wrong way, yeah, that was a, a top spot kick. And just yeah, as you say, what a mental end to a half, and essentially the end of the game because literally nothing else happened. Yeah, I mean, I've got a couple of notes 
really, I mean, Michael Nottingham heads over a Kelly corner from a few yards out on 52 minutes. 57 minutes is hilarious. Oh, Taking yeah. Media being yeah, sent off without being on the park, which is very impressive. Which, I will say, again, did you say it was Colin Stephen was the rest? Yes. It kind of, it's just like, let him hurt. He's just annoyed about the situation. <laughs> it's fine. Like, grow up a wee bit. Well, this is it, because now presumably he's suspended for yep. games. I mean, I know we've both said that we believe that Livingston are away anyway. I was just about but to check who their first game is actually Hypothetically, they could, they could stay up here. They, like they absolutely not, could. It's not mathematically done yet. No. Because their first game. Now they play each of the five within the bottom six. Like it's not, it's not over till the fat lady sings. That's what I was going to say. I was going to be like, oh, who is it that they actually play first? And they play first game at home, Ross, Ross County. County. Oh my god! And he's missing for it. So it's like, so, so hold on a second. Could Ross County relegate them? No. Yeah. No, because they're ten points off safety. Yeah. So the county would go on to 33, they'd be 15 clear with oh, four yeah. to go. With yeah, four to go, aye. So Livy so pretty would... much have to win that now. Yeah, so... Livy have to win. And now they're without, arguably, their star striker. So yeah. Colin Stephen, you've got blood on your hands. But I know, it, it kind of is like bullshit. Yeah, like he is their joint second top goal scorer. Bruce mm -hmm. Anderson's got five, he's got three, and now after the weekend, Sean Kelly joins him on three. Stephen Kelly. It says shot. Wait, do they have a Sean Kelly? Yeah. Oh, oh right. Back. Right. <laughs> the left back has got the second joint amount of gold. Right. They're fucking down. Never mind. It doesn't matter. They've got a Sean and a Stephen Kelly. They've both scored yeah. three goals. And folk are like. I remember they had Liam yeah. Kelly in, in between the sticks. Oh, my as well, God. Yeah. Well. That was a big thing. Uh, by the way, I will so say. Kelly's this. in Devlin's. If, 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 if your son was Kelly or Devlin, you're about to end up at Livingston one way or another. Cammy. Don't think about it. Fuck off, Gary. You're staying here, mate. Um, I will say, the only other thing that happened at the game, uh, I got in early and was sat in my seat and then I just noticed someone coming towards me and it was Brad. So a oh. very like loyal and lovely listener. So I stood with him for about 15 minutes just chatting about everything. He confirmed to me that Penrice wasn't playing, which I hadn't picked up on. Yeah, he's out with injury, I think. And that was it, because I was like, yeah. is this a thing we've put in the contract? But no. <laughs> As Brad came in. So that was lovely to see Brad and speak to him. Oh, he was very confident going into the game. I can imagine at 2 0 down, he was thinking, <laughs> What the fuck have I done? As well, uh, you weren't the only one, Brad. Yeah. Um in terms of second half, again, there's a there's a cross where Stephen Kingsley comes off the bench, cross into the box, and it comes out to Shankland on the far side. He controls, sets himself, shoots, takes a little deflection, smashes off the crossbar, Livy eventually clear it, and it comes to nothing. Cammy Devlin could have and probably should have bagged a brace on 64 minutes. Lovely ball from George Grant into the middle after he exchanges a 1-2 with Kenneth Vargas. Clip ball into the area from Grant, but Devlin slides his effort wide. Um, Shankland fired high and wide on 66 minutes that Hearts TV just decided to include twice in the highlights yep. package for whatever reason. No That's idea why. Um, <laughs> and then Iowa Obelai was next to head over a Sean Kelly corner for Livy. Um, and Daniel Mackay, who's on loan from Hibs, was rubbish with an effort sneaking in behind that because in shot corner um, on 83 minutes. So, yeah, not oh! a great deal to, to shout about in the second half. What, One thing that fucking should have been shouted about. So for about five minutes, everybody started singing the Tagawa song as he was wow. warming up. And he, get, he gets brought on. And it's one of those moments where the stadium was like, Willing them to score. It was like, come on, come on, come oh, on. Oh, that's nice. And then right at the fucking end, Alan Forrest gets completely clean through and Tag was about four yards in front of the goal with no one there. The keeper, Shamal Georges, went out to close him. I did see on the highlights. And Alan Forrest doesn't he pass to him and tries oh, to shoot and it goes. No. And the stadium was like shouting, like, Alan, he was there. And like no, Tag no. looks at him and is like, no. And this is now the... Th that's I three hope you times. Get I hope you get dropped to the weekend, Alan. <laughs> that's that, three times it's happened to Tagawa, where he's been perfect position for a cutback. But Macaulay Tate, Cami Devlin and Alan Forrest have all been like, no, yeah. I'm going to all looked chance. up to see the recipient and gone, no, you're all right. Yeah, and then they've all fucked it. He should be on four goals. Cami Devlin's got a habit of that. Do you remember the, the breakaway goal in Riga? And yes. it's, he sees Stephen Humphreys and he's like, no, I'll just no, like Alan Forrest instead. <laughs> okay, mate. 
But yeah, the Tagawa song was class. Everybody just did oh, it for like good. five oh, minutes. God, I don't miss that now. Oh. Was, that was good. That was Sports the best part Hearts of the game. TV sort of <laughs> shit out. Disappointing. However, we're hoping to put disappointment behind us. We're hoping to secure third place in our next league fixture. Five games to go. Sadly, we can't catch Celtic now, unfortunately. So yeah. that's the title gone. Uh, Rangers are within reach, but of course, play Dundee at Dens. Not McDermott Park uh, yes. on the night of release. Yes. <laughs> so that's that's something. Glad it's gone ahead at Dens. He said optimistically. I was about However, to say, it'll come out tomorrow morning that <laughs> it's been moved to McDermott. However, we are 11 points clear of Kilmarnock and we could secure third place with a win in Ayrshire before the month is out as our post-split fixtures were released today on the day of recording. We take on Kelly at Rugby Park uh, a week on Saturday uh, in a 3pm kickoff. We then head to Celtic Park the following week as we take on the Hoops at Parkhead. Uh, the following week is our penultimate home game, which sees us take on Dundee, uh, the 11th of May at Tynecastle. We then travel that midweek on a Wednesday night to Paisley to play St Mirren. A Wednesday night in Paisley is not what you want to hear. No. Um, and our season rounds off on the Saturday as we host Rangers at Tynecastle, 12.30pm kickoff. And hopefully then we've got a Scottish Cup final to look forward to the following week. He That's says. the dream. Optimistically, yeah. Thoughts? You you think third's done anyway? Yeah, third's just, done. Just get it secured, please. Um, it's good that we could literally physically get it secured first game yeah. post split. Yeah, uh, fair play. I would be the first to criticise the SPFL there, but you know what? Yeah, well like, fair play. I'm surprised that they've uh, put the old firm as the third game week. That's usually always the second, so that oh, one yeah. can't win it at the other at the other's ground. Could Celtic win it? At- at Parkhead against Rangers. Oh, only, only if Rangers lost one of their games running up to it. So they've got three league games before like then. Um, I will say it'll be hard. Like we are one of the only teams to go to Rugby Park and win this yes. season. And um, they're very good at home. But interestingly, actually, we didn't have a podcast because it was in the national break. But. On the way back from the Killy draw, I ended up walking up the entirety of Del Rai with this random Killy fan who just started speaking to me. And right. I was kind of like, I was just speaking to him about the season. And he was saying that a lot of the f- Killy fans don't rate Vassell, which I was yeah. surprised at. I, I heard that from uh, one of the boys at my work, I think. I couldn't yeah. believe that. I thought he was solid. I know he's not like a guy like who'll score every week, but he always seemed to be a problem. Like, oh, hundred percent. I, I, whenever I watch him, I think he's a nuisance. I, yeah, it just goes to show you what, like, you know, when you know when people from the outside would look at us and think, how can some of the fans not take to Robbie? Like, yeah. they're absolutely flying in third. Like, an if example you watch of it week this week, season. There you go. Like, it's just. I was speaking about it on Twitter this week. An example is I cannot understand Hibs fans' frustrations with Ellie Yuan. Yeah, there you go. He's got I know. 20 goal contributions this season. Well, it's one their moment of the season. That's what yeah, I exactly. Already, already <laughs> yeah, he's, it, he's played something he's like, fan. for a team that's not in the top six, he's played 40 Sorry, games. What was that? Uh, yeah, uh, Hibs, Hibs aren't in the top six. I was disappointed. I was looking for that final Edinburgh for Derby, but obviously couldn't nah, see it. it doesn't matter. Oh, no. <laughs> Another season where we're unbeaten in them. What a fucking oh, nightmare. No. I've run out of the amount of times that's happened in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, he's played like 40 games, got 20 goal contributions for a Mingin team. Like, that's great. <laughs> and you'd think the way some Hibs fans speak about him that he's the worst player in the park for them every single week. Yeah. It's mad. It is mad. But yeah, the, the, the fickle nature of the football. Exactly, a la George Grant, basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, Eagle if he scores the winner at the weekend. Exactly. I do you think. Got your statue. What? There's five games left. We're eleven points clear. If we don't get third now, it's the biggest ball we've ever oh, had in our history. Like, that is, by that a is mile. something. Um, so yeah, I think it's just going to be. I, as I say, I don't think we're guaranteed to win at Rugby Park. I think we could feasibly lose at Rugby Park. And then we'll lose we'll against Celtic. Against Dundee. I think we'll secure it against Dundee as well. Um, but yeah, the the more pressing matter is this weekend. 
Indeed, her league duty is put to the side as Hearts are one of four remaining teams in the Scottish Cup as we head for Hamden this weekend. The first semi sees Celtic and Aberdeen go toe-to-toe at the National Stadium in a 12.30 kickoff on Saturday. We then take on the Jairs on Sunday at 3pm. But before we get chatting about selection, predictions, all the usual shenanigans, I want to touch on Big Hearts and their efforts ahead of this weekend's clash. I'm just going to read their statement for yep. anybody that's that's missed this. Um which states, help us create memories at Hamden Park. Big Hearts will work with those from across our projects and local partners to give those who wouldn't normally get the chance a brilliant opportunity to support Hearts in the Scottish Cup semi-final. Hearts Midlothian FC take on Rangers this weekend at Hamden Park in the Scottish Cup semi-final and we are working alongside partners including Hearts Midlothian FC, the Foundation of Hearts and others to give families and groups who otherwise wouldn't have uh, who wouldn't get the chance, sorry, to have a day out at the National Stadium while supporting Hearts in the biggest game of the season so far. This fund will allow donated tickets to be matched up with travel expenses and food costs to ensure that there are no barriers to attending. For example, we'll provide tickets for travel for small groups, put on transport and provide food vouchers where it's appropriate. Please also see the opportunity to take part in our Big Hearts Day shirt raffle, which will also support this excellent initiative. I've bought a couple of tickets for the raffle before we've come on air, McIver. You were blissfully unaware, but you donated anyway. Yeah, I, w- um, I, I just thought it was just a donation, like, so just put money into the fund. I didn't think you got raffle tickets. But this is something that I would urge everybody who's financially capable yeah. to get behind. A marvellous cause. And when I last had a look a couple hours ago, I've just raised over right £12,000. What are we at just now? We've just hit 14000 <laughs> Unbelievable. And it's just so, about to hit 24 team. hours that it's been up for, and we've raised just under 15 grand in 24 hours. It's Incredible. absolutely insane. Incredible. I, I I love our fan base sometimes. Yes, we are the biggest bunch of money bastards, yeah. myself included, <laughs> from time to time. But when it comes to, you know, reaching into the pockets, we're not uh, we're not shy to splash the cash. So that's fantastic. Unlike our opponents this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting them in early. <laughs> Talk to me. What are you thinking? Oh God, I'm no confident. <laughs> like we've All never beaten on them at Hamden, night, done it? I know. But oh, the law of averages. There was Ross County that hadn't beaten them in however many attempts. Yeah, and they're hit first in. It has history. to happen eventually. But uh, the pessimist in me goes. I know we have that in the same calendar week that they lose to Ross County for the first time I in know. their history no, and I lose know. to us for uh, Hamden for the first time in history. But listen. The big talking point is going to be selection and one of the main people that I've seen discussed about selection is someone who made his return to the starting lineup at the weekend and it was Barry Mackay and I would not be starting Barry Mackay. That makes two of us. Good. Good. And I love Barry yes. Mackay. Um, it's, it's, like, but yeah. Big games, we've seen it far too often that he just goes missing. I'm worried that George Grant also comes into that category. I think he will start. I've got a blend of what I think Naismith might go for and what I'd like to see him go for, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I think he's going to go three at the back. So do I. In which case, I would like to see Gorn in goal because that's been made abundantly obvious that he's going to start. I think Naismith literally said Gordon starting in the semi-final. Kingsley, Kent and Rolls. Yep. Uh, Cochrane left wing back. Yep. I'd like to probably see Len Bikisa right wing back over Atkinson. I think they're much of a muchness, to be honest. Len Bikisa's faster, so I guess play him on that big pitch. I, just, I think the wide areas are going to be massive. Yeah. <laughs> Benny Beningame and Cami Devlin, because obviously the Hoff's out. Yep. And I'd like to see us go with Forrest and Vargas in support of Shankland to get at them. That's Again, a- would have no qualms if he chose Oda over Evargas, yeah. but Forrest has got to play because at least he's going to constantly try and get at James Tavernier, get in behind James Tavernier. He and Connor Goldson are there to be pounced upon, so let's get at them. Thoughts? I think this is one of those rare moments where we have the exact same team. That's exactly the team I, Grant I think. I think he will, if, but only if Naismith doesn't go with a three, but I think he will go yeah. with a three. Yeah, I yeah I if he goes back four, then Atkinson probably comes in and Grant for yeah. Len Vicisa and Kingsley. Probably. Yeah, 
I would agree. I would agree with that completely. And my bold prediction is because I'm willing it. Optimistic. I'm willing this into existence because okay. get, it's te- like 12 years yesterday as we record to the BT moment. Oh, it's I like BT becomes obviously he scored in that derby. That's as well, one of the best games but, I've ever been at. In yeah. terms of a moment as well. Yeah. He's one of his... But exactly. You said that there, a moment. And it kind of, regardless of the goal he scored against Hibs and stuff like that, everybody remembers BT for that singular moment. This is the moment. For Tagawa to do this <laughs> off the bench, <laughs> off like the bench, like just at half time running in behind. <laughs> so you gonna poke the first through for Shanklin to take yeah. past uh, Jack Butlin? Listen, Tagawa has had in the league, I would say, like one objectively good performance, and it was against Celtic because his style is playing off the shoulder, running in behind, like Janelli did last season. I love the justification for this. Right, mean, I've he's not thought even selected about this. in your first 11, I've but you're going to this, right? I've thought about this. Come on, maybe him and Mackay come on in the Sprints hour Sprints past John Suter. Exactly! <laughs> that was exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Literally that. We've Opens kept it tight. We've done a Paolo Sergio. Ballin. We've rode our luck in the first half and kept it tight. Then, on about the hour mark, we get Mackay and Tagawa on. And Mackay plays that through ball he did for Shanklin's first goal at Easter Road, where he just does it out of nothing. And Tagawa gets a goal. I mean, I just, look, really. It would be like that more. It's like Tagawa could do nothing for the rest of his life and he would be the biggest hero ever if that's his only meaningful goal. But my actual prediction... He could could do with a moment like that. My actual prediction is 4-0 Rangers. Oh, you knob. (laughs) I just think it's going to be one of those times where we're like, right, come on, keep it tight, open in 10, know what we're doing, and eight minutes in, Rangers penalty to Avenir scores and the whole fucking game plans (laughs) out the window. I swear I've gone two one hearts for every like old firm game. I'm going to go three one hearts. Oh, he's going for it! Shanklin se- hat trick. I've got, obviously, as I've said a few times in this podcast, I've got a few heavy mates, and they've been saying to me the last few days, they were like, listen, we went a couple of seasons ago to that Hamden League Cup semi where we just didn't think yeah, anything right. was going to happen. Completely just accepting our fate. They've got an annoyingly good record against Rangers. Yeah, Hamden. no. It's I think Rangers haven't beaten them in like eight out of ten attempts or something. Or like they've they've only won like That's twice wild. against them at Hamden or something. It's crazy. I hope you're right. I hope it's just one of the days like 2012 was, where you just turn up and go, who fucking knows? But we were here earlier in the season saying all this, and then it was that, that was year. that was in its infancy of Stephen Naismith's reign. True, very true. Since very then. True. Since then, we've beaten Celtic twice, which are massive morale boosts for the squad. Yep. We've had that experience of playing Rangers at Hamden previously under Stephen Naismith. Might you be tempted to change things and it possibly produce a different outcome? I don't know, but I really hope it does. Hagawa, well, last listen, goal scorer. Put your mortgage on it. It's happening. <laughs> I haven't seen Rangers defend up in Dingwall get right in about them. They are, they are yeah. there for the taking. I will not hear any different. And I know the, like, the Hamden pitch, I don't think enough people pay attention to how much of a bad thing that is for us. Like the yeah. size of that pitch oh, can kill us. And Ross we're County playing at Tynecastle each and every exactly. week that week, yeah. Cauldron. Ross County couldn't do what they did at the weekend at Hamden to Rangers. But... The individuals that were at fault at Rangers' goals can do that at Hamden as well. Yeah. You just need to get yourselves, like we're saying about Oda, take a risk and try and just get into a position to do something. Nothing to lose. Let's go for it. Yeah, come on. Exactly. Before we round off, I've got something to lose weekend. here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We're going to take part in the end is near quiz. I have got. Three multiple choices for you. Fucking hell, that means they are solid questions. Who am I, obviously, to conclude? But your first is just a normal question, and it is, excluding own goals, 
when was the last time that Hearts won with four different goal scorers? And this isn't a multiple choice question. I know. I can't even remember the last time we scored four. <laughs> Never mind with fucking old goals. I don't even care what game you mean. Uh, we I, must I have had done an answer in my head when I posed this to Scott at Heart Stats and he came back with two completely different answers. So I was like, oh, great. That's, that's nice. We must have done it this That was miles season. off. Who have we scored for yet? Right, it's no Kelly, it's no Celtic, it's no Rangers, it's no Hibs. It's if, no if you were including own goals, there'd be a win this season. Oh. that I'll give you that clue. But you're not. I'm going to say against Dundee United at Tanadice two seasons ago. That's funny you... because I thought that it was the victory at Pinecastle against Dundee United two seasons ago. It was neither. Oh, okay. I thought you were building it <laughs> up to be like, but you were right. It was a game last season at Back Pinecastle. Castle. Was it against... Motherwell. No. Who was it? <laughs> it was against Aberdeen. More specifically, oh, the fucking the 5, 5 nil nil. Right. Yes. Prior to Jim Goodwin's sacking before the Devlin, Darwin game. Shankland. Before... Gino. Devlin, Shankland. Gino and... And Sunday. Yes. Lovely goal. Is arguably the pick of the bunch. Oh, Michael Smith. Sibic Michael Park. Smith it was. Yes. yes. There Sibic's you go. ball over the top. Yeah, Gino scored two, Smith, Shankland and Devlin. So I was like, Jesus. Fuck me. That, How can I, I not remember that game, but can remember each goal scorer? I know. I, I know. That's, that's just the way that, that it plays tricks on your mind. Because I yeah. thought the exact same. I thought the 5 too. So I was convinced Ben Woodburn had scored twice. Did Adam oh, did I? score that day? Yeah, he did. I was thinking the Dundee United one. I, I don't even think we scored else. four. Kingsley and somebody else. That's I don't even think we scored four in the game I'm thinking about now. The one where Sims came off the bench and scored. Uh, we win that 3 2, I think. Oh, was it three? Aye, ah, yeah, I, I think it was. Two. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That was a great season, actually, with this. That was. Yeah. And now you just look at Ella Sims, I look at him bagging I know. goals for Coventry just about every week like a proud da. Exactly. Love him. Mind when Hearts fans are like, to the Premier League, Ellis. You deserve it. Mind when Hearts fans are like, why have we not brought him back as he's on 40 grand a week or something? Exactly. Him and his big size 13 feet. What a boy. Hero. Second question, Daniel McIver. A multiple choice. One of, obviously, the, the multiple choice trio. Hearts have only won 4-2 with all goals coming in the first half once before. But who are we playing on Monday, the 15th of September, 1919? Was it A, Aberdeen? B, Rangers? C, Celtic or D Hibernian. I'm ju- I'm going I by. I was worried that you saw this because Hearts Heritage posted it, and I thought that is a crap. No, I def- fucking pay attention. I'm using the logic of even back then we wouldn't have scored that amount. We fucking wait. What was the question? <laughs> Hearts have only won four two with all goals coming. All in right, the first okay, half okay. That's before. fine. That's fine. I th- I was like, did you say something about like the amount of goals in the half or something like that? Right. My logic is it won't be fucking either side of the old farm. 1919, I remember it well. Um <laughs> we won the very good that season. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go Aberdeen. Daniel McIver, you put it down to a 50-50. And you chose the wrong answer. It was Hibernian and Easter Road. Fuck. One of our many countless victories down Leith Way. There Bollocks. you go. That's mental, though, isn't that it? Is Only mad. the second time in our history. That is mad. 150 years. Crazy. Crazy. Speaking of something that happens, what feels like every 150 years, question number three oh, when God. was the last time Dundee finished in the top six? Was it A, 2010 11? B, 2012 13? C, 2014-15, or D, 2017-18? Right. I feel like it wasn't recently because it feels like they just keep coming up 
and going back down. And as a result, they wouldn't have finished in the fucking top six. What were the first two? Sorry? 2010-11 or 2012-13? 2010-11 or 12-13? 10-11? What were we doing in both these seasons? Right. That was the season we fell apart. I was going to say, yeah. Um, right. We were shit in 10-11. At the end, when they shit at the start, we were fucking great at the start. <laughs> um, 11 12, obviously, we finish about fifth. I think we finished fifth that season when we won the cup. Uh, 11 12, yeah. Aye. What was the third option? Because the last one you say 17 18. 2014 15. Oh, we won the there. Oh, and neither were Rangers or Hibs, so there was a vacuum. Fuck it. I'm going 14 15 because no other teams were there. See, when you apply your logic, different class. 2014 yeah. 15. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to see who else was in the top six? Yeah. Can I guess? I Celtic, Aberdeen, yeah, Motherwell, Dundee, oh, Partick. Oh, easy, Tiger. <laughs> right, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm up for it now. Lo- I've got lo- a point. Loading up the table. Right. Who did you say? Celtic. Yeah. Aberdeen. Obviously. Yeah. Partick. No. Fuck. Motherwell. No. Dundee. Yes. <laughs> well he done. said no there. <laughs> Inverness. Yes, they finished third. Fucking hell. So I've got one more to get. Inverness, coincidentally, were on 65 points that season. They won 19 games in the Scottish Premiership, and we've just won our 19th. We've just won our 19th. What the hell? Uh, Dundee United. Yes. And you've got one more. Who finished fourth? Who finished fourth? By a point ahead of Dundee United in fifth. Oh, man, Nick. No. Who was it? Kelly finished 10th. Fucking hell. St. Johnston. Bloody hell. Celtic, Aberdeen, Inverness, St. Johnston, Dundee United, and Dundee to finish the top six. You mentioned a couple in the bottom six. Hamilton Ackies finished seventh. Partick Thistle, eighth. Ross County, ninth. Kilmarnock, tenth. Motherwell, of course, because of the playoffs, finished 11th. Oh, of course they did. The Moshney game. And uh, St. Mirren finished 12th, rock bottom. Fucking hell. What a time to be alive. But then nobody gives a shit because the championship was far better. It was class. Yeah, exactly. So you're off the mark. I didn't get as it still never got a zero in the quiz. You used your nut. Well done. Thank you. Thought that I thought that we might. I I mean I knew the first two were tricky, but uh, that's that's disappointing. Uh, Ross County finally beat Rangers at the 25th time of asking. How many of the previous 24s had the Staggies lost? Was it A, 17, B, 18, C, 19, or D, 20? So 24 possible games. Yes. Am I going to be a massive prick to Ross County and just say they've lost the most amount of possible options? For some reason, I'm in between 18 and 20. Okay. Fuck your odd numbers. I'm an even man. Um, Good to know for the future. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, just always adding odd number questions. I'll never get any right again. Sorry, Ross County, but I don't think you've got many results. I'm going to go 20 times they've lost. Daniel McIver, I thought that you were going to say that you paid attention to my tweet on Sunday morning. No, I don't pay attention to you. Records, that's fair enough. <laughs> um, but I, I put that Rangers had won 20 and drawn four of the previous 24 meetings against Ross County. You are correct. Yes, I do pay attention times. to you. I'm an even <laughs> man. Bollocks. <laughs> get so, it. You know, you've, you've redeemed yourself towards the end, and I'm I'm going to be honest, I think you'll get this. Who am I? Oh, dead say is, that. I don't think I've ever got one after you've said, I think you'll get no, it. I, no, I think you will. Right. Ready? Here we go. On you go. I played in Moldova, Sweden, and signed for an English club before I joined the Jambos after impressing and scoring in two pre-season friendlies. I scored on both my competitive and league debut for HMFC, 
before then being sent off in my first Edinburgh derby. After attracting interest from Birmingham, Celtic and Rangers, I was sold to an unknown Asian team before playing in the UAE and England. I represented another three Scottish clubs, moved to Thailand and then came back to the UK, where I was playing in the National League North until I left my team in February of this year. I'm a huge fan of reggae music, as I believe it helps keep me calm. Who am I? Those early clues, I had Wacky Madow in my head because <laughs> okay. I just remember him and his big thighs. And when he I, did, he get sent off in that derby when he clattered thingy. Mind, I can't even mind if he got I sent think off. He did, uh... but then he did. He never played for multiple Scottish teams, and he didn't score in his debut and all that. I'm gonna look on his Wikipedia now. Wacky Please Madow, do. You, you intrigued me. Uh, oh, right. it, says, it says absolutely nothing. Oh, okay. Literally says club career. Adal was loaned to Scottish Premiership club Hart Midlothian in January 2018. I wonder what's happened to him. He's playing for Petro de Luanda in Angola. The famous. Um... <laughs> Big Petro fans. Yeah, here. right. I need to narrow this down. Between what seasons was he at Hearts? He was at Hearts uh, between 2014 and 2016. Shit. Right. Is it Osman So? Did he get sent off in a derby? Because he scored against Rangers. He's like, he's Swedish. He said something about Sweden. He was at Palace. Before, I think, because I think the whole thing was him and Neil Alexander. We got free palace. Okay. Um, do you leave us as. Was he only here for two years? Surely Osman Soul was here for longer. Um, I don't want to ask the clubs because I might have got that palace thing wrong. Okay. He did go to Asia, but I can't mind where. I think he went to China. Right. I feel like I should ask nationality because if it's Swedish, it must be Osman So. Okay. I don't know what the other game. I don't. I'll be honest. I don't remember him ever being sent off in a derby. And I don't remember him scoring in a cup that season. But he might have done. And the other problem is, if I narrowed in the nationality and it's not Swedish, I'm fucked. Yeah, that's true. I don't know anyone else. I've got nothing else to go with. That's true. I'm going to be... What nationality would he represent at international level? Now, that um... can be the same... If he never played... That would yeah. be the same answer. The reason I'm asking that question is because last week we boozied because he was born in France, but he played for Algeria. So my point okay. is... You what... want me to clarify if he could represent multiple yeah. nations? Okay, so this player is of Senegalese descent. Shit. But was born in Sweden. Oh, fuck! <laughs> I, don't, I thought Osman So was just Swedish. Oh, fuck. Because now I'm trying to be like, was Burabin or Gomis born? Was he sitting? No. Was Burabin Senegalese? Fuck. Burabin definitely didn't score in his debut, though. He scored in a derby, but he didn't score in his debut. Gomis didn't score in his debut because they all made their debut against Rangers in that championship game. Danny Wilson scored for the header. Nicky Lawden equalised, and then we went on the other end. I'll be furious if I say anybody else apart from Osmond So, and it turns out to be. So I'm going with Osmond So. Daniel McIver. McIver, McIver. Have you McIver. put the link in that he scored against Rangers? So being like, 2014 come on. 15 season, you labelled off all these people making their debuts. Morgaro Gomez, Prince Wavin. But the correct answer was Osmond So. Yes! I was going to be like, <laughs> have I forgotten about somebody really obvious? I honestly thought you were veering away from it. I was thinking, yes, I've got away with this. Oh, fucking um, I didn't know he had Senegalese 
um, descent. Yeah, ne- neither did I. Um, it was only when I saw. Yeah, it's in his. Uh, it's in his Wikipedia. Still only thirty three, Osmond. So that is he's actually, mad. He's thirty four on Monday. It's his birthday on Monday. So hopefully, the day before, we can reenact what he did <laughs> ten years ago this year nice. and beat Rangers in Glasgow. Nice. Um, in terms of the clues, yeah. uh, played it. I, I, I rearranged the Moldova and Sweden because I thought if I go Sweden straight away, you're going to get that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I see he, what he did. He played for Falk Farsta and Vasby United for playing for FC Dacia Chisinau, Sarianska FC, Crystal Palace, and then the famous... I was right about Crystal Palace. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> um, uh, he impressed and scored in pre-season friendlies against East Fife and Manchester City. <laughs> oh, I similar stature. <laughs> So yeah, signed for Palace. Didn't play a game for them at all. Was just rotting away in wow. the reserves. Uh, scored on both his competitive and league debut. You mentioned the game against Rangers. Scored on his competitive debut in the Challenge Cup against <laughs> Annan at Tynecastle. Would never have um, that. Sent off in his first Edinburgh derby for an elbow on Michael Nelson. I don't. Even, I don't remember that, that was, at all. That was the Sam Nicholson game. Was it? Did we? Did so get? Yeah. I have no. Me- I just remember Brabin scoring the penalty. And Nicholson scoring the rake. That was that was at two 0 I think it was late on towards the end. Uh, I don't remember that at all. A brilliant strike from Sam Nicholson. I mean, contrasting fortunes from the penalty spot handed Hearts a two one victory in the first Edinburgh derby outside the top flight. Nicholson gave Hearts a seventy six minute lead and exploded a previously uneventful game to life. Uh, the left foot shot in off the post from twenty five yards after not making Scott Robertson. Robertson received a second yellow card three minutes later after clipping the heels of Prince Bavin inside the box. And the Hearts midfielder did what his skipper Liam Craig failed to do from the spot in the first half as he found the target to double the lead. Heart striker Osman So also received a red card following an elbow on Michael Nelson with two minutes left and Farid El Alagui pulled a goal back in injury time. Gorgi side saw out the win to maintain a perfect start to life in the Scottish Championship following their opening day win against Rangers at Ibrox. I don't remember the So thing at all. Neither did I. So that's why I thought I could maybe try catch him out there, but you're too wise to unfortunately. Smashed it. Absolutely smashed it. But let us know if you got it as well, how you did in the quiz, and how you're feeling ahead of this weekend's trip through to Glasgow. But if you did enjoy, please leave a review on your podcast platform of choice. It massively helps out. If you've been watching us on YouTube, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Pert to Paisley on all the socials. Pert to Paisley at gmail.com if you want to fire us over an email. And Adam, where can they get you on all the socials? Uh, you can get me on all the socials watching Osmond shows, highlights of spells at Kilmarnock and both Dundee clubs, alongside listening to uh, some Bob Marley while I'm watching him. At Adam T. Kendall, what about yourself, mate? I forgot about the reggae clue. <laughs> I should have asked about that. I am at dmcaver 22 We'll be back next week to discuss all the fallout from the semi-final, preview the upcoming split fixtures, and anything else that happens in between then. But... Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye!